Hello everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show and as usual we have a fun jam-packed show for you today. I'm not here alone because I have my lovely newsreader with me here, Rihanna. Hi everyone. How are you sweetie? I'm wonderful, thank you. You're going to be sharing some news items with yes. us in just a moment but we're going to tell the viewers what we have on the show today. Now of course we always have Jane Rafter on and this time she'll be showing us warm-ups to do before running so it's good that you pay close attention to that so you don't pull any muscles and we'll also be talking to designer of Alpaca Knitwear, our Lee about her frustration with a nine to five office job that she hated and her decision to leave. And we'll also be taking a look at how to make a quick and easy to prepare dish with Hannah Richards. And later on as well, we'll be talking to Karen Smedley about pushing for a successful career, making the most of what you've got. And of course, we have our self-development clinic with Chris Brown. And I'll be answering a question from a viewer. Blimey, that's a lot to say, isn't it? Okay, that's it. <laughs> so let's go over to Rihanna. Oh, already? Okay. Hi. <laughs> right, don't worry, I'm not going to say anything silly today. I'm quite composed. My neck is up high and I'm feeling <laughs> wonderful. I was telling her some posture stuff to do before, that's why she's talking about her neck. And as you can see, I'm doing well. You are doing well. So Fair. tell us what you've got, come on. Well, so you see in America, proms are a very big thing, such a big deal, and everyone looks forward to their prom. It wasn't such a big deal in the UK until recently. Mm. Now, if we just put it flat out there, a prom is a school disco. It happens every year. There is no big deal. Yet parents are spending a thousand pounds on their 11 year olds, trips to the hairdressers, makeup, a limo, a tiara. I mean, I don't remember That's doing that. That's beyond prom. Now it's just a bit yeah. ludicrous. But I, mean, I remember the grad my graduation from uni because that was a big deal. We had like a big sort of party and mm. like a dinner and dance thing. And yeah, it was a big deal. But we didn't have stuff every year like through school. And I don't yeah. remember doing that. Now it's a big deal, especially when you're, you're finishing year 11 and you know, there's a big palaver, there's a prom on a boat down the River Thames oh. and what have you. It's lovely. But for an 11 year old and spending a thousand pounds, Somehow, I, I'm not quite into that. Well, if you've got it, why not? For an 11-year-old. <laughs> I mean... If the 11-year-old works for it. 11, year 11, you're making a big deal, something... I know, it's not small, but she's 11 and a thousand pounds. The whole shalada, it's like, you know, she's getting married. But it's just a school prom. Can't imagine her wedding. We're talking about one individual here, aren't we? One individual. Okay. But then it's something that a lot of parents are starting to do now, spending 500 pounds on a dress. Mm. It's a bit... That's the thing, I think the parents are setting themselves up for a bit of a fall because if graduation and yearly stuff is like that, they're going to expect much more for a wedding. Well, how much are they going to spend? A million? <laughs> Who knows? Well, you know, we'll let you know when it comes to that, <laughs> surely. But something else that I discovered is that the older you get, or should I say the wiser you get, it's a bit difficult to make friends. Now, there's been a, a study that people who, you know, age and stuff, they, they find it difficult to make friends, especially when they move into a new area, move, um, relocate for work. Meeting friends and, you know, just having that circle of friends around you is something a bit difficult. I'm not that old. <laughs> so I still have the same friends for about 10 years, so you can guess how young I am. But then for people that relocate, they find it difficult to have that, you know, circle of friends. Does it say why? Time. Um, being nervous of meeting new people. You know when you... Yeah, but that's the same for everyone, what they're But then the really. older you get, it kind of gets tricky because you just feel you have, you know, that awkward moment where the conversation is about five seconds long. Hi, hi, and then, you know, awkward stares. I would think, I would think you'd have more to talk about because you've lived longer. <laughs> I thought the same thing, but unfortunately yeah. it's not really the case. I guess everybody gets nervous. We all have that, oh no, I have to meet someone new. How do I present myself? How do I speak? Are they going to be bored from the moment I open my mouth? Maybe it's a mm. bit more difficult the older you get because you've got so many things to think about and you don't want to put everything onto that one conversation but you still need to have you know friends because friends support you friends you will yeah. have for life but if you find it difficult to make friends when you move into a new area it could kind of have a toll on you because when you had that hard day you just want to talk you probably just want to let it out of yeah, a nice hot cuppa yeah. but if you're finding it difficult I mean how does the person overcome something like that you know it's not always you shyness just got to practice. it's just a Push yourself the more, out Yeah, there. exactly. The more you push yourself, the more you'll get used to it and it'll become easier. But if you just keep to yourself all the time, 
you're going to find it even gonna, harder to, to start approaching people. And you're going to be stuck, really. And but let's face it, everyone sort of finds those people that they just click with immediately. Naturally, but then... And the, then there's others that you, like, you know... Mm, take know. 10 years to get close to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I have Everyone, this everyone can years. make friends, I'm sure. I used to find it really difficult to make friends, I kid really? you not. You say, oh, no, but you're so bubbly. Yeah, right. I was the shyest thing on earth, I tell you. Yeah. It took me, like... I don't know, maybe a year or so to really, really talk to someone. Oh, but now, you're not like that now, are you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> took me years to talk to you. I'm kidding. Oh, stop it. But, you know, it, it does get easier with time. Sometimes you just yeah. need to find that one conversation that yeah. will just set you off. But anywho, moving on to greater things. How would you like to buy a house for one pound? Oh, lovely. What kind of house? Doll's house? Well... No, it's not a, a doll's house. house, a proper house. Um, a couple, they bought Brit Britain's cheapest house for one pound and today it is worth 70,000. Right, tell us how. Right, um, I think it's Lawrence and his wife, they moved into their property but it was in Stoke-on-Trent and the council was trying to get rid of some houses that have been blocked off for years. And they had this poll where they put everyone's names in and then a few people got picked and they were the lucky ones. And they didn't move in until December when they had everything done up and it looks... One pound? Are one you serious? Pound. But why didn't they charge more than the pound? I guess it's one of those, you know, the council had the radiation properties on the market and they kind of wanted to get rid of it, I suppose, because it was a road with houses all If you put up. a house up for more, more than that, you can get rid of it. Like but they were, they were selected, they were chosen. 3,000, 4,000? One pound, that's a bargain and a half. <laughs> They're going to cake in half a million for that, I tell you. Wow. <laughs> but I, if that had happened here in London, which I don't really see that happening, but you'd have tons of people to pick from. So oh, it yeah. was a bit like a lottery lucky dip of 33 properties that the council in Stoke-on-Trent wanted to get rid of. So this couple, they're loving it. They're oh, enjoying wow. life. Okay, right well... Now. If I was one of them... Good yeah, for them, one pound house. It's <laughs> lovely. Um, also, you know how cyclists always seem to be in these horrific accidents? That's one of the reasons why I'm scared to ride a bike, because I just never know when a car's going to come or when I'm going to fall into something or just pedalling as a you know, hole. OK, let's, let's stop there, Rihanna, because there are plenty of cyclists that, that they're very safe they and they're are, very... But a lot of drivers. them get, you know, unfortunate accidents happens, but this... Yeah. Um, Company in South Don't Africa. Don't put everyone off cycling now. No, I won't because this, it's very this, healthy. This um, what you call it? This gadget is amazing. It's a, a, a radar that kind of helps cyclists to know when a car is getting closer. Oh, that's good. So cyclists, you're all safe. I might be joining you next year, <laughs> not anytime soon. That's good actually because it's um, very hard sometimes. It is very hard, especially too. in the night or traffic, and sometimes cyclists want to dodge through. You know. It seems clear, it's careful, but then without realising it, something happens. So I think this company has done something really great to mm -hmm. help cyclists and to kind of help the world stay healthy. Because yeah. a lot of people avoid cycling due to these unfortunate circumstances, but now we're all going to be safe. Great. Do you think you can see yourself cycling to work? You no. drive at the moment, don't you? Yeah, I'm, I just, I don't know. It's too much work. Women carry so many bags. So <laughs> many. Where are you going to put you it You can all? get the, the one with the basket. Oh, the pretty front. basket at the front. Yeah. Then my bags are like this big. That means I'll have to have three bags that are this small <laughs> and then try and fit everything in. And then when it rains and then you have the hair and... All right, forget it, forget it, all right. It's <laughs> You're not going to be a cyclist. <laughs> no, not anytime soon. <laughs> But, um, We've got time for one more, I think. Yes, I do. And this one's quite amazing. Long distance love is pretty hard, especially when you have to talk on Skype and what have you. But now there's a gadget, as you know, I love gadgets. There's a new gadget that lets you squeeze your partner's hands from the other side of the it's world. It's not the same, I'm sorry. It's not the same, but it can help, especially for that granddaughter who wants to connect with her grandmother. It's not 100%, you know, the, the dream thing, but with technology advancing now, everything can happen. And most seniors, they're not really geared up into technology so something like this is really setting them forward then they'll learn to use Skype and everything so it just makes life a lot easier. I just think it's weird because that's, uh, that's just the start isn't it? A you can start. just imagine like what's going like, to come after. I'm over here somebody's in I don't know Holland and then hi and then oop, they feel the sensation. <laughs> no, I don't know. Sometimes you me. need that if you're talking to your friend friends are relocated to another country you won't be going to visit for a while. I don't want to squeeze a machine or something. It helps. I don't think so. Don't, don't I, don't know what the, I don't know what the viewers it, think. Viewers will love it. <laughs> well, it's on the market 
and you know people are always willing to test and try so it could be something you you try and you see do you know what i mean sorry i don't like it i don't like the sound of it no, don't dismiss it too quickly okay. you never know you no, try right, it out see. and tell your i don't viewers. want to try it out because <laughs> my husband's hand every day i want him near me not far away <laughs> rana thank you so much thank you for having me and we'll see you again next week yeah okay and all good luck with all your Fitness stuff, it. but I won't I'm go into that today, will we? <laughs> no, no, no. All right, just <laughs> right, stay tuned because after the break, I'll be joined with Arlette Lee to discuss her leap to freedom and the setup of her new business that she developed whilst traveling the world. So, do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before I meet my first guest, let's take a look at this cooking tip with Hannah Richards. My name's Hannah Richards and this is the MTS the Move 360 Kitchen. I'm on a mission to help people build health from the inside out. I'm going to teach you some very simple recipes that you can make in the comfort of your own home. So, first of all I'm going to start with a power tincture. For a power tincture you need some fresh ginger root, turmeric root, some lemons, and some fresh mint. So I'm just going to rough chop that ginger there. Then I'm going to get the turmeric root. Now the turmeric root is very bright orange and can have a tendency to stain your fingers. We've got our lemons, which I'm going to squeeze into the blender in a minute, and then some fresh mint, a few leaves, and your fresh mint is great. You might find that your shower gel is always a mint flavoured and that's because they recharge and refresh and that's what you want to happen first thing in the morning. You want to recharge your body. It also gives it a nice fresh taste to the mouth as well. So there you go. There are your main ingredients for your power tincture. Put them in and then I'm going to squeeze a lemon just put the knife in the middle so you get the juice and give it a whiz around so you get the flesh of the lemon too. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of water in there to help it all mix up and let's blend. Put the lid on. There we go, and you see all those beautiful flavours and colours shooting up to the surface. Okay, and there you have it. The best way to start any day. Yum. Welcome back. So now I'll be speaking to Arlette Lee. Hello, Arlette. Hi, Chrissy. How are you? Brilliant. Now, I just have to, to correct something that I said earlier because, Arlette, you didn't hate your former job. I loved just, my You job. loved your former job, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I said hated at the beginning. But you, it's just because you didn't... You felt like something was missing. There was more... Exactly. Something you wanted to do more of. I had been doing this job for a long time and it felt like I was living this robotic lifestyle mm -hmm. and simply got to a point that I thought a change would be good. Yeah. So and how long were you there for? All. Before? I worked with my colleagues mm -hmm. for seven years in one company mm -hmm. and it was a wonderful company and I loved all my colleagues. I'm still friends with them. So yeah. I'm pleased we corrected that. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so tell us about what, what was it that you were actually going through? Because I think it was quite a, a big thing of you to, to give up a job like that. It and was. sometimes when it's actually it's easy when you don't like a job to just up and leave. But when you do actually enjoy it and you like the people that you work with, but still you decide to leave, it must be quite a deep rooted reason. Yes, it was. Basically, I 
embarked on, do, on all of these courses trying to find myself mm -hmm. and nothing was really happening and then I kept having this voice going off saying come to New Zealand Arlette, come to Peru. So do you I always thought, wanted to travel or was it something that just... I've already travelled extensively yet I hadn't been to Australia, Peru or New Zealand so mm. they were on my hit list. Okay. I simply just had to go, had to experience this backpacker lifestyle, which all my friends had it's done, amazing. and travel with a backpack. So I handed in my notice, walked across the road. What, just like that? You just like... Well, was I was like... in limbo for mm. around two years, but it okay. was actually one Christmas. I, I thought, New Year's coming, let's have a positive change, okay. Arlette. Yeah and see what happens and then you just did it did you go by yourself by the way oh you? i did <gasps> seriously and it was all brilliant alone. Wow. it was so liberating so brave <laughs> i do I, it's funny because i don't actually see myself as being that brave doing it because i was so used to doing things on my own i'm quite comfortable in my own skin mm -hmm. yet i was a little apprehensive about leaving all the creature comforts yeah. of home and I wasn't going to get that monthly paycheck um, so simply I said you have to try and go with the flow now and mm -hmm. see what happens instead of living this quite structured linear life. Gosh. So what was your first destination? I went to Thailand first. Thailand, okay. Have you been no, to I Thailand? Oh, no. it's incredible. <laughs> I went to the most amazing wedding in Thailand. It was legendary, but that's another you get story. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, no. You were no, that one I was actually invited oh, yeah, to. Was... <laughs> that one, so there I was actually. Your... <laughs> I've never gate crashed a wedding, so. But uh, afterwards, I ended yeah. up going to New Zealand, and that was a place I had always wanted to go to, mm -hmm. and was the start of my journey really discovering what I was about and what I wanted to do later on in life mm -hmm. because I didn't feel I wanted to go back to finance mm -hmm. and it was actually in New Zealand that I had this epiphany and I really didn't think those sorts of things happened but it did it was this light bulb it just went off mm -hmm. and said yeah work with artisans internationally sometimes I think you just have to get away from certain things and it's like your mind is more is, is clearer to think and you're more I think open to ideas and, and things that come exactly. and then you can get these brilliant ideas which is why it's really important for everyone just to take time out you mm. don't necessarily have to go travel the world yeah. like you did but even just to take some time out just to be by yourself and just to think because that's when the best ideas come and you exactly. had that you had that moment I did. So what was it that you developed, that you, you discovered? So I then went on to, if I may go back a little, mm. I, I went on travelling and eventually I arrived in South America and I felt cold and warm, similar to what we've been saying in the studio <laughs> here, this changeable temperatures. Uh -huh. And I was travelling with this light backpack. I wanted to keep it light and I was living my life with this mantra less is more mm -hmm. so I thought it would be wonderful to have one practical garment to wear all weathers all occasions and look fabulous in mm -hmm. yet I wasn't able to find one instead I had coats hanging off my <laughs> backpack and I ended up looking like a bag lady yeah. Chrissy which wasn't really <laughs> the image no not not at all but mind you I only had one pair of flip-flops and a pair of hiking boots Gosh. so um, what I developed was a ruana which is a style of cape and it's native to South America this garment mm. they all wear it there it's part of their lifestyle mm. and it can be worn in extreme temperatures because they generally make it with alpaca right. but it's a blend so once I found these ruanas and learnt more about alpaca. And just for the, for the benefit of the viewers that don't know what alpaca are, can you just describe what 
kind of animal they are. Or do we have any? I don't know if we have any pictures of them, but can you describe what? Sure, they are? they're a South American camelid, and they look uh, similar to llamas. Mm -hmm. I think you might have seen them. At yeah, the I, zoo. Thought, I did see. A, oh, there they are. <laughs> seen a couple exactly. in the zoo. Yeah, they're quirky, a bit yeah. like myself. <laughs> And so you discover that their fur is very... It's a it's sumptuous grateful. fur, mm -hmm. and it's got these fantastic thermal properties. So I have one yeah, here you, to can show. Can we take a look? Absolutely. Oh, wow, it's really Oz, soft. It is. It's super soft, yeah. very lightweight, wow. and each piece is handcrafted. I'd love to use to model it, and I can show you various ways so how does you it, can um, wear it. OK, we've got a couple of minutes before the break. OK, so... Exactly. Is it this way? So, OK, yes. well, right. Okay, and then you can wear it loose, mm -hmm. or you can have it belted cozy. up. <laughs> exactly. Oh, gee, yeah, you put a belt around it. Or you can flick it over your shoulder and wear it with a brooch. Some people use it as a blanket on planes, mm. or you can do the whole look cruising around with it just thrown over yeah. one shoulder. It's really nice and soft, wow. And it's okay. hypoallergenic, so that's why it feels good on your skin. Yeah, it does, wow. Okay. So but how long did it take to actually put, get the ball rolling? And Because it was a, just an idea initially. Exactly. And then how did you get it all moving? And It probably took it was quite nice six to months was of... Nice uh, throw. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you can use it as a throw. <laughs> it took around six months after I got back from my solo travel, uh, doing a lot of the research. And then mm -hmm. I had to get on the plane. And then I was scared because... I had no idea what I was doing, how I was going to find people to make these pieces. Uh -huh. I literally took myself out of my comfort zone, leap of faith, and said, you'll be OK. You have to do this. You want to showcase the artisanship mm -hmm. of Peru because it's incredible what they do. And they're so passionate. Yeah. about their craft so I'd love to keep that going and bring and a piece of that nature back to certainly the world. That. We're going to continue talking to you after the break because I'd like to sort of know how you develop the business and maybe obstacles that you, you face sure. and how you, how you got through that. And we're also going to talk talking to Karen Smedley who's a career change expert and you know talking about how to achieve success even if it's something that you know you're not it's a field that you're not familiar with so do stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now we're going to shortly speak to our career change expert, Karen Smedley. But first of all, let's take a look at this fitness tip with Jane Rafter. Hi guys, it's Jane here with your fitness tips. As you can see, I'm outdoors again. And um, if you can see the love of you, I hope it's inspiring you to get out and get fit outdoors this summer. It's free and we've all got a park somewhere near us. So have a think about it guys, get yourself outside and get fit. And over the next few episodes, or episodes I'm gonna show you a few ideas of how you can get fit, how you can tone up, lose weight, and just feel fabulous outdoors. So what I'm gonna start with you, I've as you can see, I found this nice little deck area. I'm going to do a few warm-up exercises that you really should do before you start running. The worst thing you can do if you're new to jogging is come to a park and start running because you need to warm up your muscles and you need to stretch. Okay, it's really, really important. So I can't stress that enough. If you want to, if you prefer to warm up at home, you could do that and then get into your park and, and go for your run. So what we need to do is think about warming up the knee joints and the muscles in the legs. So this is what I do if I'm going for a run, okay? So I would start with low impact moves like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm warming up the knees, warming up the thighs. I'm also feeling a little stretch here in the hamstrings. It's called a dynamic stretch. It's a stretch that you don't hold, but you keep moving. Because what you shouldn't do is go into a strong stretch on a cold muscle, because you can injure it, okay? So you need to keep moving. So I would say you need to warm up 
for over five minutes, preferably about seven, eight minutes of warm up before you even run, which sounds a lot, but it makes a big difference, trust me. So you can see I'm just going side to side here. I'm gonna bring my feet in. I'm gonna start doing just a few gentle squats, not too deep. Going back into the heels, let me show you sideways. So I'm not coming into forward flexion. My back's nice and straight and the weight goes into the heels like that. That's it, that's great. So if we just do a few more of these. I'm also gonna go into some lunges, which also are really great for warming up the legs. If I go sideways again, what you gotta make sure of when you lunge is that you stay tall and that your knee is above your ankle and not forwards like this. This puts pressure on your knees, okay? So don't let your knees come forward. You bend both knees and you have your knee stacked above your ankle. Okay, so a few more of these. Do you know these also slightly raise your heart rate, which is a good thing. Generates a bit of heat in the body, starts your cardiovascular workout without you launching into it. If you suddenly run, your heart's not prepared and you find yourself out of breath, can't breathe, and you'll stop. So you want to build it up slowly. It's the best way to do it. Okay, another nice one is to mix up a stretch now with some warm up. So I like to squat and then lean forwards. Squat and lean forwards. And as you lean forwards, you stick your bum up so you feel a stretch down the hamstrings. These muscles at the back of the leg, they're the ones that tend to cramp up if you don't warm up. If you run without doing this kind of thing, these muscles start feeling really tight. Also, the calf muscles. So I'll show you stretch for that in a second. I'm gonna do one more of these. Another nice warm up is kicks. Lifting up, one leg at a time. If you can touch your toes, fabulous. If not, don't worry. Just aim for the toes. So I'm already feeling my heart rate going up now. And my legs are starting to feel nice and warm. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a calf stretch. We take the heel back and press the weight down through the heel. You can do it standing easily like this and like this. Now I would, to be honest, have done that for a little bit longer than I've done with you. I would have done more of the same things. Quad stretch is also good. But do it until you feel your heart rate's up a bit, you feel warm and your legs feel nicely stretched and then you're ready for a run and off you go. See you next time. Thank you very much, Jane. So now it's time to go to Karen Smedley. Hello, Karen. Hi there. How are you? Very good, thank you. <laughs> I'm well, thank you. So Karen, we've had, we have a guest with us called Arlette today and she's been telling us about how she left her nine to five job, a very nice job that she was enjoying. Um, but she felt that there was something more that she wanted to do. So she basically traveled the world and she started her own business. So now, I mean, that is a big step and I think that was very brave of her. But I'm just wondering how many people are there that do have like a normal office job and they, though they like it and they have the security and everything like that, but they, they want to do something more with their life and they're not really happy anymore. They start to feel like, you know, well, I'm, I feel like I'm wasting my life. I need to be doing something else. So I, I believe there's quite a few people in that situation. There are a lot of people in that situation. And what happens is that we go on sticking with it and thinking that that's what we need to do and to just stay there rather than actually getting a change. What we need to do is identify what it is that's making us unhappy mm -hmm. and what could they do to make ourselves happy. And mm -hmm. you need to think about what are the things you'd like doing, what are the skills you've got, and if you don't have the skills that you'd like to have, where can you get the training? Because it's really important to not just sit at the interview. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the first step. You really need to think about what can I do with my life and what do I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And if you do decide that maybe like an office job, nine to five, isn't really you and you want to do, pursue a career, pursue like your own business, but you have that, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't work? What if I lose all this security in my monthly wage? What am I going to do? What, would you, what advice would you give to someone like that? 
But I think that when you talk to yourself negatively like that, um, you go round in a spiral. Mm -hmm. So you need to say to yourself, stop. And what do I want? And what do I need to do in order to achieve it? Mm -hmm. And who can I talk to help me? And to find out different ways of running a business. I think it's quite hard to start a business without any doubt. But there's lots of people out there who can get advice. Mm -hmm. And so it's about getting advice, finding things out, and not just jumping at it, but planning and thinking it through so that you can do it step by step so that you really feel much more secure when you start. Mm -hmm. So no rash decisions basically, like, because maybe maybe you're having a bad day in the office and all of a sudden you say, no, I'm going to leave, I'm going to give my notice in, I'm just going to start something myself. That's not the way to do it. <laughs> it's not the way to do it because suddenly there you are going, help, what am I going to do with myself? Rather yeah. than actually saying, I'm decided that I haven't been able to leave and if I leave this month or in three months' time, it doesn't actually matter. What matters is I know what I'm going to do, I know I've got the skills and resources to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that you don't always have to start a business on your own. Sometimes there are other people who you may be working with who also feel dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. And doing it with a partner often helps. Brilliant. Okay, Karen, thank you so much for the brilliant advice as usual. That's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so we've got a couple of minutes left. So tell us, um, obviously it hasn't been easy for you, but what's kept you, what's kept you going even though you face some obstacles? My passion for what I'm doing mm -hmm. and knowing I'm slowly climbing this mountain and I will reach the top. Mm -hmm. Which is brilliant, which is what Karen was saying, isn't it? Because exactly. there are people that are in jobs right now that are saying, oh, what if it doesn't work? What if I start something and it all goes wrong but like she was saying you can't speak negatively to ourselves like that i think if people feel a bit stuck in a rut in their job they need to make a conscious decision to take the time mm -hmm. to reevaluate their lifestyle and what is really important to them mm -hmm. because sometimes we think all the money and everything in the world will make us happy but stripping back to basics you rediscover who you are and you may have an epiphany or if you have an idea, mm -hmm. go and follow it. It's yeah. there for a reason. That's right, definitely. Alex, lovely talking to you. Thank really you so good. much All for the your best time. with this brilliant business that you've got. Thank you very Thank much. You so it's a much pleasure for being here. Thank you so much. Okay, so do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be answering a question from a viewer. And also we have Chris Brown with the Self Development Clinic. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to the programme in the self-development clinic with Chris Brown. Hello, Chris. Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> well, before we get to Chris, I'm just going to answer this sure. question. This one's from Geraldine and she says, my mother-in-law has never got on with my husband and we, we always invite her down, and she always, but she always spends the time moaning and complaining. She spends time with the rest of the family, but most of the time when we invite her, she always makes excuses not to show up and then says we never have time for her. I'm tired of this pretense. She really dislikes us, and we are tired of trying. Is there anything else we can do before we stop this pretense? What would you do, Chrissy? Now, uh, first of all, I know it's not a nice thing to live in pretense and your mother-in-law is obviously upset about something. Now, you say that she and your husband have never got along, but there must be something that happened to cause them not to get along or perhaps something they, they're both doing that irritates the other. So if I were in your shoes, I would probably first speak to my husband to see if there was something that he needs to apologise for. Now, obviously, you can't force him to do this, but you can try and have a gentle word with him, first of all. But it seems that he's... Um, more open since he is inviting his mum to your house. I then think that both of you should have a heart-to-heart -heart with your mother-in-law and see if you can come to some kind of understanding. Some families don't speak to each other for years because of silly misunderstanding. It just takes for one family member to start a conversation, issues are solved. Now this shouldn't be done in an accusing way or an aggressive way but in a gentle and loving way no matter how she reacts. But be warned though, because lots of things might be dragged up from the past and things that you didn't even know was bothering her. But be patient and be understanding. And I'm sure, like, you know, 
keep, I would say don't give up on that because obviously it's, it's his mum, it's a family member and I really do believe things can get sorted out if you're just open and, and calm when you're talking about things and I really hope things work out for you. Now if you have a question as well that you'd like to ask me, if you're in a situation you'd like some advice, you can email me on chris at chriscbshow.tv. Anything to add there Chris? I thought it was great advice in itself to be honest, I mean there must be another issue why yeah. there's that gap in between and sometimes even letting go of people accepting that they've actually got a partner, they married someone, is a sort of resentment in one oh, way as well. True. So yeah, sometimes a bit deep rooted more than that. You yeah, know? it's that good to get things out in the open, yeah, isn't it? And just definitely. sort things out rather yeah. than sort of skitting over things. Gets buried, goes on for a long time, isn't yeah, it? Not good, true. not good. But funny enough, okay. we're talking about, we're actually talking today about communication, you oh. know, overall. Now, the thing about it, funny enough, listening earlier on, I heard Rihanna mention an article and it was about when people mature making friends that it's less or where the area they move to. Yeah. And I found that really interesting as well because I wondered um, how does that come about and where did it actually get out from? Because it's a case of, you said earlier on, well, when people mature, they know more. Yeah. Which is where I came from as well. I thought, mm -hmm. well, they'll find more to talk about, more to go into exactly. at the end of the day. So I find it interesting. I think it's down to the person's character yeah, themselves, you know, being able to speak to someone. I think mm -hmm. it's just an assessment there. So, hey. Anyway, but back to the whole thing of communication. Mm -hmm. Communication, overall, as much known as said before, is the, communi is the key to your success, regardless what. Now, the thing is, you can't really achieve much without communication. And on top of that, you can achieve a lot more through effective communication. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many reasons why people can't communicate, and much to what I was just saying earlier on, it could be a case of being really shy or something that happened a really long time ago. Yeah. Being self-conscious as well of a self, wondering about somebody else's opinion of you and thinking, well, looking at person thinking, well, what are they thinking about me instead of actually getting to what you're saying? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of barriers why people find it hard to communicate. Now, the whole thing is actually, crossing over that barrier and find, well, look, I am somebody, I can communicate, it's not the worst thing at the end of the day, and bit by bit, we've got to work on it. Yeah. So the thing it's about it... we can learn, isn't it? It is something yeah. we can learn. I mean, I've known many people who have been painfully shy when I was mm. younger and totally flourished, totally different. I mean, could you think about it now? You're sitting here in front of this camera. Would you have done that many years Never. ago? Never. I was very yeah. shy. So you developed yeah. along the way and you, mm -hmm. you must have a desire at the end of the day and follow it through. Imagine the amount of people that have got desires, but because they do not communicate, they don't actually achieve yeah, their goals and it goes with them. So mm -hmm. we've got to find a way to actually push yourself, step forward and start communicating at the end of the day, right? Now, talking about it, I've got one here, which is um, being effective about how you communicate, thinking about how you communicate. Now, on top of that, Let's say it was a meeting. It's the way you actually deliver what you say to someone. Mm -hmm. And we've got to be aware that people do have feelings, regardless if it's the boss or the employee at the end of the day. And people don't really want to know what you have to say, much to say, until they understand how much you actually care. So when you understand how much somebody actually cares, you're more tentative to actually listen to what they're saying, mm -hmm. observe and digest it. Whereas when you've got something just delivered in any kind of way, it's a case of, well, I can hear you, but I'm just hearing a sound and I'm more thinking about what I'm going to say or my resentment towards it. So it's communicating, especially in business as well. You know, that can be an area, let's say, having a meeting. You can tell if someone's trying to sell a product and they don't really like the product. But exactly. then when someone really believes in something like RLET here as yeah. well, so then... You can tell the passion, she's passionate about something and you listen. Very much so. It's yeah. funny because when Arlette talked about it and she talked about the different temperatures and the fibres and all that, mm. I was clued in it. I thought, get one of them. Yeah. I'm sure my wife is at home thinking, yeah, get me one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, just so you, no, but very much what you said, the way she communicated, the passion about it made me actually really think about it. So I think that's great. It's the way we communicate. Now, in a situation of a meeting as well, there's the whole area of being able to actually listen to somebody. Mm -hmm. And we have many distractions around us all the time. We've got the emails, we've got the mobile, we've got everything happening, somebody coming in. It's worth switching those things off. You know, it's worth closing the door. It's worth using your listening skills and actually tune into that person to be more effective in the way you communicate. And one of the worst areas is not being able to actually listen. You know, because we hear what somebody's saying, but are we actually listening? to what that person is saying before we answer. You know the worst scenario is when you're talking to someone about something and all they're thinking about is what they're going to say next before you finish, or not the other person, yourself, your mind so automatically jumps. You're describing exactly how I was used to be with my husband. Right, I've okay, and how did that go with that? It was terrible. My gosh, yeah. I, I, he was trying to, he spent years trying to communicate with me 
in right. arguments this was and like I, I just wouldn't listen to what he had to say right it was only when we started to get counseling and stuff like that that I started listening to what he was saying and then I realized oh my gosh he's he has an opinion and like right. I, I need to start it just changed the whole relationship yeah and just really you said yeah in marriages it's important both parties mm. listening to each other you know how many times when you got men you think I just want to say this I just want to say it's all right finish yeah. what you say that's yeah. it yeah, get exactly. out now you didn't just so you can say your yeah, bit it doesn't make sense yeah. so more effective communication you've got one person who's the receiver Mm -hmm. Right, that's the listener, and you've got the output as well, the talker at the time as well. So you've got to be able to balance them yeah. in a cycle. Listen, speak, listen, speak at the same time, okay? Now, the one thing I always tend to mention as well is emotion and mind as well. A lot of um, decisions that people make are made out of emotions as well. And the whole thing about communities, because communicating as well, let me put my teeth in, right? <laughs> okay, the whole thing about communicating as well is actually being able to work with both sides. Mm -hmm. So, here we go. Uh, you've said something to me, I respond to it, and what I've do, done is just respond with actually mm -hmm. thinking what I'm gonna say. Back to the same thing, you've got to think about the person who's receiving it as well. Jump yeah. into their shoes, all right? Now, to wind this down, we got uh, four key areas in communication, and it's one I always deliver, and it's one is eye contact. It's very important to use eye contact when speaking to someone. I always say the first few seconds you walk through a door in an interview, They've made their mind about you. Little things like that will make a difference in communicating, right? Now, it's funny because I was looking at a bit of research here and they said the more testosterone we got, that the less eye contact you make. So it's saying that uh, females are better eye contact yeah. than males, I'm oh. thinking. So, it's interesting. Got to go delve a bit further <laughs> than that. Okay, so we got eye contact. The next one is your tone of voice as well. The way you deliver the information makes a difference, right? Eye contact, your tone of voice, your body language as well, because the body does not lie. You can keep it up for so long, but the mind is the one who controls the rest mm. of the body. So what you're thinking, as much as you may sit this way, sit that way, it's gonna come out one way or another. So you've got to get your mindset right, body yeah. control, right? And back to the same one I just mentioned, your listening skills, very, very important. So start to listen to each other, start to communicate, whether it be business, personal relationship, friends, start listening, make a big difference, communicate. Now, Chris, I had so much to say with this subject, but I was sure. really holding myself because we, don't, okay. we didn't have much time, so I yeah, didn't want to keep interrupting time, yeah. you. But there's so much to talk about, and maybe we oh. can we can extend this we can touch this time on, on this week. subject yeah. more because yeah. everything you were saying is like, yeah, I've got an example about that, I've got an example about that one. Right, it is a <laughs> so great it's, one. So it's a lot to yeah. talk about, isn't there? Yeah, but there thank is. you so so much. Pleasure. <laughs> All right, guys. So we have reached the end of today's program. Now, I do hope you've enjoyed it and you've um, benefited from it as well. Now, if you want more information about the program, you can visit the website, Chris cbshow.tv and if you want to email me personally you can do so on chris at chriscbshow.tv but I just would like to leave you with something before we go it's really really important that you are doing something with your life that you love or else you're not going to be very happy and you'll be counting the minutes till you finish work for example and that's no way to live now you may say that it's risky to change what you're doing but I would say do it while there's still time and because you will love what you're doing you'll do everything it takes to make it work Okay, so I do hope you've enjoyed the show and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.